Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, how to build strong family bonds, child development and education, all through the lens of the principal self-government. And in this video, we're talking about how to teach a child to focus in the classroom. In this video, we're gonna be talking about focus and we're gonna be talking about the classroom. We're gonna be talking about attention span, how that relates to focus and things that we can do in the classroom. And we're gonna talk about what you can do to adjust your environment so that more focus is achieved. taught school for 23 years. I've taught at private academies, at the collegiate level, and I've also homeschooled my children. So I did foster care for a lot of years, treatment foster care for troubled teens. Those children all went to the public school, but my own four children were all homeschooled. And I will say that homeschool is a really great environment for a person who struggles with focus because there are so many different things that you can do if your child is struggling to focus when you do homeschool. You can say, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna read to you a story and you're gonna play with this little manipulative. Maybe it's a math wrap up, maybe it's some modeling clay, or maybe you're drawing a picture of the story that I'm, I'm reading or something like that. And just, you can mix it up like crazy when you homeschool. So this video is not about homeschool, but I just wanted to just throw that out there as an option. If you have a child who struggles with focus, it could be that the environment is not really working for your child. Or if you happen to be the teacher, maybe what you wanna do is mix it up, make your environment just like a little bit more free flowing like homeschool. And when I say free flowing, I don't mean that you don't require anything of the students. I just mean that you let the environment be a little bit more natural so that the children have a better opportunity to focus in the classroom. All right, so let's talk about focus versus attention span. So attention span and focus are very closely linked together. When a person focuses well, it's usually because they've developed a little bit more attention span. So what we really want to initially try to develop is attention span. So there are many things that are going against attention span in our modern culture. The digital culture is absolutely undermining our whole society's ability to have good attention span. We see a lot of young people, young adults who are watching a movie and on their phone watching and reading something else all at the same time because they don't have enough attention span to do just one thing at a time, either just watch that movie and follow all the way through with it or just read that thing on the, on the device and follow all the way through with that. They have to do both at the same time. Some people might think, well, that's multitasking, that's better, that's higher functioning. Well, that depends because really education is not about getting through material, it's about getting the material through you. So what are you really gaining by that experience? If you can't focus your full attention on it, you'll probably get less out of it. So many children struggle with attention span, especially at first, and this is because their brain development is just wired in such a way that attention span is difficult. They are used to things shifting and changing a lot. They get distracted by each new thing around them. In fact, when we're training babies how to speak, how to walk, how to roll and crawl and move, everything is very stimulating. Come get this, touch this, suck on this, bite this. We're giving them all of this stuff to distract their attention. And then sometimes when they're upset, we give them another thing to distract their attention, like maybe some bouncing or, or something along those lines. So it shouldn't be a surprise to us that not all little babies and toddlers and children, even older children in the classroom, that sometimes they struggle with their attention span and their ability to focus. Now there are multiple different reasons that we could talk about why children do have a hard time focusing here, but I think we'll take a little bit more of a proactive angle and say, but what can you do to actually create the environment where the per person can be more focused and increase that attention span in the class? Now, if you've already subscribed to this channel before, then you know that this channel is all about skills. 
It's all about deliberately developing the skills and principles of self-government so that you can be in control of yourself, so that you can feel confident in your ability to solve your own problems, to communicate with others, and so that you can create united bonds with other people. If you haven't looked at the volume of, of stuff on this website, then I highly recommend going to look at some of those skills and principles of self-government that we're going to be mentioning here in this video. So one of the first things that you can do to develop attention span is talk to the children about what attention span is. So I was part of a homeschool group where it was called Knights of Freedom. We brought these young boys, okay? So imagine boys ages eight to 12, okay? coming to your house and they're all a big group of them. It might be 15 of these boys, eight to 12. That's a lot of energy. That's a lot of people who could get distracted, not pay attention, have a hard time sitting still. We had to prepare these boys for success. And so one of my co-advisors decided that we would start to do a patience challenge and it would be a, an attention span challenge really where they would sit still for a certain period of time and we would try to stretch it out over the course of the year so that they could learn to develop more and more attention span. So at the very beginning, she said, we are going to practice sitting still, not moving, not smiling, laughing, not looking at anybody, just sitting still and looking at the same thing for one whole minute and I'm gonna time it and we're gonna see what we can do. And when we get up to five whole minutes in this group, we're gonna practice it every time we get together, every other week. When we get up to five whole minutes of being able to be completely silent and still for five whole minutes, then we're gonna have a reward, right? And so then they came up with some fun thing that they were gonna to work toward. You should have seen these little boys focus. They were focused in on developing their ability to not move, to be still to look at one fixed point for a long period of time and to be able to hold that focus, hold that view for all of that time. And you know what? They met their goal. They exceeded their goal. They started saying, let's see if we can go seven minutes. Let's see if we can go 10 minutes. They wanted to see how long they could do it. They felt so empowered by the idea that they could sit still. Do you see psychologically what that does for the person? Just that little exercise of practicing for a short period and then extending it more, more, more teaches the person that it's empowering, it's strong, it's satisfying to be able to rein yourself in and to tell yourself no. Okay, so let's talk about that. Skills, I love skills, remember? So there is a skill called no answers, accepting a no answer or criticism. It's the same steps for both of those two different things. There are four steps to that and you can actually learn those four steps in my parenting book, Parenting a House United, or there's a set of children's books that teach the four basic skills of self-government to children. There's one called Porter Earns a Quarter. It's a green book. That one teaches accepting no answers and criticism. So the whole idea of self-government is that at first I can accept no answers from you, but then I can also accept no answers from myself. Then I'll be truly self-governed. When a person can focus in, when they develop their attention span, they have to give themselves no answers on all of those distractions or other thoughts that might creep into their head. They learn four steps. They learn to look at the person or the situation, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay or ask to disagree appropriately, and then drop the subject. So if I say, no, you can't do whatever that is, or if I say, I need you to do this particular thing, I need you to sit still for two minutes, then they say okay, and then they sit there, and when they get this thought to do something else, they say, that's a no answer self. Like inside their head, they're saying, that's a no answer. That's a no answer. And then they say, okay, be calm. All right, drop the subject. Don't think about it anymore. Just keep focusing in. Just keep focusing in so that they are successful. All right, and then afterward, praise them, right? When they're able to do this. So accepting a no answer is huge. If they can do that, for themselves. So there's something that you can do in the classroom setting to set up the environment even more so that your child can learn to focus. So what you do is you pre-teach what the classroom setting should be like, what you want to accomplish, and how you can maintain focus in the classroom. What types of behaviors might get in the way and what skills you need for success. 
So this type of pre-teaching is going to prepare the child to have buy-in so that they will stick to the skills, they will use them and see that they truly do make them successful. Now, there are three different types of pre-teaching. Not only are you going to pre-teach that big picture, which is kind of an instructional pre-teaching, but then in the moment when they need to use those skills that you've taught them, then you will give them additional pre-teaches that prepare them to use those skills right then at that time. There are multiple steps for doing a very effective pre-teach that I talk about in other places here on this channel. So you can definitely go to those places or probably the most convenient thing would be to go to teachingselfgovernment.com. Now, if you are a teacher in the classroom or if you're a parent worried about your child's classroom, I have to tell you something. This is so exciting. Just this year, I developed an official program that is being used in schools all over the world. There are whole states that are using this as child discipline programs. It is called the Teaching Self-Government Skills for Success Classroom Behavior and Discipline Framework. For years, I just taught people how to take the teaching self-government principles that were for a family and put them into a classroom for behavior, discipline, good social, emotional learning for the child so that they can better self-govern themselves and self-regulate. But people said, please, Nicolene, turn this into something that can be used in the classroom. And so I have an official program that is now used in multiple states and countries around the world. You can find that program at teachingselfgovernment.com. So if you're a teacher, request it. See if you can get that program or just get it for yourself. Or if you're a parent, maybe buy it for your teacher or, or suggest the program to the school. If there is a large number of teachers that want to do the program together, such as a whole school, there is a volume discount on that program for schools. The whole point is for teachers to be successful, for them not to be using these social emotional learning programs that truly are just not working. Why not improve focus, improve behavior, improve class discipline, as well as help the child learn self-regulation and social emotional learning all at the same time without creating confusing dialogues about their emotional states that really are proving to be problems around the world with the current social emotional learning programs that exist. So go to teachingselfgovernment.com, find that classroom behavior skills for success program and look into that and see if that couldn't help you even more learn what you need to help your students in your classroom. I'll see you there.